Um, we issued our statement yesterday, and uh, you know that's all we're going to be able to say about it. Uh, it's an ongoing legal matter, and we got to let that process uh, play itself out. Was it a team decision or an MLS policy decision to not have him out here at practice today? Uh, I don't know that I can comment on that. Um, it, it is, uh, you know, part of any collective bargaining agreement. Uh, it's these kinds of things are negotiated with the union, and I think the fairest way to answer that is to say that there are a couple of parties uh, involved. I guess, why did you guys choose to put it out there yourselves yesterday? Was that just kind of getting him through the process as soon as possible? Or? Important to us to be responsible citizens. I'd rather acknowledge that stuff happens rather than it leak out. This is all done collectively at this point. It's the fairest way to say that. We don't. We don't know. What's the team going to do in the meantime to, to fill out a spot? To take a spot on the team. We're, you know, we're going to do what we've been doing for the last month, which is next man up, and, and uh, it's obviously a bummer to lose a player, but uh, we'll try to patch it together again for Montreal and, and do the best we can and try to get ourselves out of this rut. And in order to do that, we need the guys that are here to, to play a little bit better and play a little better collectively, and hopefully we'll get that. Can you speak on kind of, I guess, the higher standard that's held to um, professional athletes as opposed to people in a normal working environment, that if something happens in their personal life, like an incident like this, not necessarily it's taken out in the workplace? Um, you know, I think it's fair to say that we're in the entertainment business, we're in the public sector, and uh, folks in the public sector get scrutinized. Uh, a couple of you guys probably have something to say about that too, so, uh, you know, there's more attention, so I think there's, there's more scrutiny. Well, I guess kind of switching gears then, the homegrown team came out yesterday. Uh, nobody from you guys, is that... A worrying sign at all since it does focus so much on sort of the pipeline that you've talked so much about our academy needs to improve we need better players in our academy um that said we had a player named to the game uh but he was hurt so who was that uh vic Mansuray. okay yeah there was some confusion around that because on the chipotle site they actually had him up but then in the mls release there's no mention of that yeah he's you know for the big all-star game you replace guys for that game you don't so i imagine that's what the discrepancy was on that okay with the upcoming All-Star Game, totally switching subjects here, um, on a positive note, how great is it that initially three guys from the team were named to that All-Star roster and that two hopefully will be playing? Yeah, that's that's great. Uh, I, I wish we had all three able to play. Um, but, but no, it's good for those guys. It's good for us. Uh, and I think it's you know it's a helpful reminder that when we get our team back, we're, we, we did pretty well. So I think it's important to keep that perspective, too, over the next, hopefully it's only one more game before these guys start trickling back and... and uh, but again, I, 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 you know, our, the guys here have to do this. We can't make excuses for ourselves and just say, oh, it's, okay. it's acceptable to lose for a month's worth of games because we miss a couple of top guys. So we got to do better internally. And yeah, I'm happy those guys are in the All-Star game and hopefully they'll, they'll be part of a good showcase. What did you think of the 4-3-3 against Colorado? Did you guys think, or did you think you looked more dangerous even if you couldn't quite get the goal? I'm going to leave tactics to the head coach. Uh, so yeah, I mean, yeah, we were, we were better. We were better than we were against Chicago, but Virtually anything would have been better than we were against Chicago. So uh, I'm, I was happy to see that improvement. You know, we scored two goals in five or six games, and they came from our right back and a dead set piece from our right back. So suffice to say, guys a little bit closer to the goal than our right back ideally would be scoring. You mentioned last, last week how you're hoping to see maybe a couple different guys step up during this stretch. Um, and I guess, well, Victor apparently has been injured. Um, but a guy like Darwin, too, I mean, would you have hoped more of these young guys would have maybe separated themselves? You know, I think we've given virtually everybody a chance. I mean, literally, we, we, we gave Darwin a chance, and we gave uh, Andy Craven a chance. And I think Zeke said in the post game last, last week that, uh, you know, Andy might have started last, the last game had he not been injured in practice. So I literally can't think of anybody on our roster that hasn't played. Uh, I guess Charlie Lyon, maybe Damian Lowe, but I, it's hard, I'm hard pressed to say we haven't we haven't given opportunities to young players. Yeah. So, um, you know, and it's up to the coaches to evaluate how they do and pick the best team. Sure. Garth, you mentioned at the beginning of the season that the Concacaf Champions League it was top priority. With the current situation in the MLS, is this still top priority the Concacaf Champions League? 
uh, what I meant to say, uh, I think I said, though, I think if you check the record, I said that MLS Cup was the top priority uh, and Champions League was the next top priority. Um, you got to win MLS Cup, but we haven't done that yet, and that's got to be our focus. Um, but is Champions League still very important to us? It is. I think it's the toughest Champions League group that I've ever seen. Uh, so we have our work cut out for us. Uh, August is going to be an incredibly difficult month with three Champions League games on top of the league. Uh, and that's why we need everybody. Again, I don't think our, our I don't think our approach is going to change. I think we've started 26 guys this year, something crazy like that. And I would bet that we're going to use 26 or 27 or 28 in the month of August alone. So um, we'll need everybody. And, and I think one of the things that ha usually happens is we're having to play a lot of young guys together right now. Uh, if you're able to play some of those young guys with some veterans around them, sometimes you get some better outcomes uh, out of the young guys. So. Uh, we'll see if we can mix and match and, and get through August that way and, and hopefully do really well in Champions League as well as the league. Um, sorry, switching focus on S2, can you talk about the success that they've had, especially here at home? Um, been very happy with, with S2 and for our first season obviously it was a, a, land, a watershed moment when we signed Andy Craven the first guy that comes up for a first team contract that's important um, S2's done well uh, I care less about their results than I do about whether or not they're developing players so for me Andy Craven is the highlight of that season uh, there are other players in that team that are, have the quality to join the Sounders at some point uh, and really happy uh, not only with how that team's playing, but how our crowds have been. Uh, and I know there's been some criticism locally about, you know, not every game's been sold out. But I tell you, you put 2,500 people into Starfire and, and uh, you get a great atmosphere here. Um, and I think it's a, it's a great environment. Uh, when you talk about young players, you want them under pressure and you want them to see adversity. And when you have that crowd, I think that crowd helps us to the home record to get, to get, the, get the results. But I think it also, uh, it's a real game. And I think everybody playing in that game knows it's a real game.